let's start the meeting. Um, so um, I'd like to let everybody know that there is a sign-up sheet for comments on the back table. And we're encouraging anybody who hasn't had the opportunity to offer a comment, either by sending a note or a letter into the select board over the last couple of weeks, or um, if you were here at the last meeting and had a chance to, to express your opinions, um, please defer to those that haven't had a chance yet. Um, and then we'll go by that list of uh, people uh, that signed up. Um, we're, we're going to limit the comments, and it's going to be comments only. I, I don't really want any back and forth discussion. Uh, the, the select board will just listen to your comments, um, and then we'll have a discussion amongst ourselves um, and, and make our decision on the letter of support. So if you'd like to offer a comment tonight um, and haven't had a chance to, please sign up. If you have a burning desire, um, having already made comments, to make another comment tonight, please sign up. Only people that uh, have signed up will be, um, I'm going to be calling off the names, um, and, and you'll have one minute, one minute, each person will have one minute to comment. Okay. Yes. No. Because we're going to have your mind? Beg your pardon? Because we're going to have your mind? No, because we did it. We spent an hour at the last meeting doing that. And we have a lot of other things on the agenda. Um, so I, we're basically, and we had asked people since the last meeting to send comments to the select board. Um, we've received um, almost 70 comments. 70, 73, 73 uh, comments. Okay, so, um, so I think people have had a chance to say their say and um, you know, we, I, don't, I just don't want to kind of rehash the same things that we talked about last time. Um, I think, uh, that's not true. That is true. Is it? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you can speak. If there's only three. Beg your pardon? Who's the tiebreaker? What do you mean? There's only three of you. Right. That's your three elected representatives. Three, three is an odd number, so what the, a plurality? I know that if two of you are for or two of you are against. Right. We'll all vote. There'll be three votes. Okay. One, two, three, and wh whatever number is the highest. I, I understand that, but there's only three of you. Two and one. There's no tie. Where's the tie, Mary? If there were four people or just two people, then there is a possibility of a tie, but not with three. It seems unequal that there's only three select board members. But well, Mary, that's, that's all there ever has been. Okay. I thought Brian Chapman was still on the select board. No, Brian is not still on the select board. That's what Chris Billy is. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, he's Brian. He's really like Brian. Him. Yes. So he's, he's really never been replaced. Right. I know we've got a lot to get to. So I just want to see. Mary, Chris was elected at the last town meeting um, day. We only elected three select board members. We only elected one. The two, Paul and I, are fin uh, have our turns still to finish out. Okay. So um, again, we need, we need the select board needs to limit the amount of time that we spend on discussing this tonight. Um, you know, we gave an hour and a half of our time uh, at a select board meeting last time. And people have had the opportunity to send in comments. So um, I have it you know, scheduled to start at 625, and I have it scheduled to end uh, the discussion part, uh, giving the uh, select board at least 10 minutes to discuss it amongst themselves in front of everybody. So um, it'll be my call when we get close to, um, let's say, 20 of 7, I'm going to end the discussion. Is everyone okay with that? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, 
And I would defer and allow the first, you know, the people that have signed up, I would defer to them to speak first. And if there's more time, um, then other people are welcome to offer comments. Okay. And I would prefer that it's just comments only, that we don't kind of get into the back and forth discussion that we had last time. Um, which last time that was great, but it's time to, to make a decision on this and move on. So, um, first thing on um, is a, adjustments to the select board agenda. And there, there will be no town treasurer report tonight. Um, and then we have received, uh, the select board has received a, a contract from Brookfield Services uh, for the year of 2022. And they're the uh, company that um, oversees and maintains our emergency generator at the school. And then there's also, um, Robin has received um, a letter from uh, the Winooski Basin Water Quality Council. They're looking for municipal representatives. Um, and uh, we'll just briefly um, discuss whether we can think of anybody that, that might be qualified for that. Uh, we have no bills to look at or to approve tonight, so um, that part of the agenda won't happen. Um, we do have some minutes. Um, and do I hear a motion to approve the minutes from the November 8th, 2021 Select Board so, meeting? So moved. Is a second? Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. So next on the agenda is the town clerk's report. Did you miss the uh, uh, Yes, I did. Thank you, Moni. Is there any public comment out, outside of the Woodbury Mountain Wilderness Preserve? Yes, Monty. Uh, last week at the uh, town plan meeting, mm -hmm. the subject came up of uh, drug issue in Woodbury. Drug issue in Woodbury. Yes. Um, and one of the big drug issues in Woodbury is the housing cost of the office in South Woodbury. Uh -huh. And I found this past week that that individual has not paid taxes in that place for 40 years. Mm -hmm. I understand that that's the only taxpayer, the only taxpayer's job to regulate whether they go for two years, three years, four years, whether they make a, a uh, monthly payment, whether mm -hmm. the house goes up for auction or for tax. I understand that. I would think with the problem we have in this town with drugs, the select board would want to work with the only taxpayer, the only tax collector. Collector, yeah. And Maybe look at different avenues of ways they could slow down the drug implementation in this town. Mm -hmm. Never, never stop it, but maybe if we slow it down. Mm -hmm. 911 is not working in this town. Right. So maybe, maybe the site board needs to broaden their horizon and look at different avenues that outside of the house. Mm -hmm. Thank okay, you. thank you. All right. Thank you. Any other public comments? Okay. Yeah, we work with delinquent taxpayers. There is always a negotiation open. It's not like we let the slot. Uh, are you speaking as a, a lister, Mary? Say again, as a lister, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay. Uh, any other public comment at all? Okay, so, Robin, um, the town clerk's report. Um, as of today, we have received one job application for the drug mm -hmm. I know they're not doing it until the 25th, but we received one. And Brady and I have started to put together the stuff for the budget for the town report. We started that last week. And other than that, um, the reports. We're still getting them on a pretty regular basis. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, but, that's yeah. Okay. Uh, have we received any more auditor bids? She was talking about the ones from Maine, but they want to do everything electronically. Uh -huh. So I don't know. Okay. So how get, far that has gotten to? Okay. All right. So we'll just wait until until Brandy can can talk about that with us. Okay. All right. 
So it's 610 and um, the Woodbury Mountain Wilderness Preserve is the next um, item on the agenda so we've got a little extra time. Um, is there, uh, could somebody, I guess I'll go and get at the comments sign up sheet. So um, there are a number of people that I know haven't made comments, so I'm going to call on the people that I know haven't, um, and, then, and then we'll work on the list. There are, there are uh, six people that have signed up so far. Um, so uh, Steve Freihofner, um, would you like to offer a comment? You have one minute. Actually, I guess I can't limit your time, but please be aware. Well, please be aware of the short sure. time. I'll be brief. Okay. What I wanted to talk about here was the, uh, the basis for the board's decision on this matter. You can see this as a pitch for the property rights if you want, but what I really want to say is that uh, I think the board really has to settle on why it's going to make the decision it does. And it has to be, I think, an objective decision not based on personal preferences. Mm -hmm. If it's an objective decision, I think as long as the project is consistent with zoning ordinance, with the town plan, and uh, doesn't interfere with anybody else's property plans, then the board should prove it. Uh, that's basically what I have to say. Okay. And, uh, as far as I've read, the description of the project on the website and uh, having had a hand in drafting the town plan, probably one or two plans have been developed at mm -hmm. this point, and being on the zoning board previously. Uh, I think that the uh, respective purchasers' uh, design, aim, and use for the uh, property is consistent with, uh, it doesn't run afoul of the zoning ordinance or the town plan. And he'll have a right to do uh, what, what what he wants with it. And I think the uh, select board should weigh that carefully in making their decision. And once the uh, select board does make their decision, I think we would all benefit by uh, knowing the reasoning uh, for the decision, uh, either by posting a copy of the, the letter in support or the letter not in support uh, on the town website so you can dial it. Mm -hmm. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Uh, Dennis Burrell. Yeah. Uh, my question is if and when these people purchase this land, um, there's a lot of question on the Hoochaman Trail and the Snowmobile Trails that are incorporated inside of all this property. Um, so after they purchase this property and they decide to tell the town we want those trails brought up to class four status roads and they tell the taxpayers you're going to spend 30 or 40 grand to bring these up to code and they give you the alternative. You either spend the taxpayers money to bring these roads up to code or turn them into trail status. You guys are going to have to make that choice. Mm -hmm. If you turn those roads into trail status, those people will shut them down. So you might want to think down the road because they're going to put you guys in the corner on that situation. And they will do it. Yeah. I've been talking to guys from the National Foundation for land preservation and many different, and they like it's in their plan. Okay. So. Is it okay if I comment on the road status? Are you, I think everyone okay with that? Um, so uh, they are classified as class four roads right now, um, the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Um, and if the town were to reclassify it as a trail, it's still town owned property. So they, they wouldn't have any say on what happens with with that road, or the the Woodbury, you know, West Woodbury Road either. Those are West Woodbury Road is Class Three, then it's Class Four, 
and then it's rougher class four. It's class four all the way to the palace town line. Um, so they have no say at all over um, what happens to those roads, even if they were designated or uh, classified as a trail. So you can guarantee the townspeople that the snowmobile trails are going to stay right. there. And it's my understanding from the hearing two weeks ago um, that they, the Wilderness Trust has no intention of um, stopping the snowmobile trail. <clears throat> So I don't honestly from talking to these people, okay. probably, which I wish was here. He um, they said there's a lot of smoke in these guys screen. They have a, a plan and they're not gonna change it. Okay, well um, all right, fine. So it's I know what you're saying, but they've done it many times before in many states, class four roads, turn them to trail and close they're, them. They're legally there's no way they can do that then. Yeah. And, my okay. understanding of town. Just remember that yep. in a year or two when it comes up. Oh, okay. All right. Please. All right. Mm -hmm. So top of the list is Michael McIntyre. Um, did I pronounce that right? Yeah, you did. Oh. Yeah, uh, um, everyone else who signed up has spoken already. So. Uh, um, speak. I haven't, I didn't sign up. Oh. Um, I'm right. Slayton. I live directly across the mountain. I pick one of the best views of all of you. I've lived here all my life. I was born in Eric Hospital. I'm a ninth generation Vermont. And they're going to screw us, I'm telling you. It's going to be covered with wind towers. It's going to be something stupid. They won't let you walk on it, hunt on it right now. They won't let you trap in. They won't let you shoot in a coyote. Have you heard all that stuff? I mean, what sense does this make? And if you don't cut the lumber, the deer are going to scatter. It's, you don't sound like they have a very uh, special plan going here. Okay. But that's your decision, I guess, because we can't make it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, is there anyone else who hasn't had a chance to comment at all yet who would like to before we get to the other folks that have signed up? Yes. I, I think I would just ask, has the select board considered um, coming out of the box thinking of, um, you know, the town perhaps requesting of the Meyer family if they would be interested in putting covenants on the list to protect the uh, integrity of the wildlife management practices that, that are you know, statewide and, and science-based, rather than these kind of arbitrary concepts that seem to be involving in these people's expectations. Um, and also, you know, you could, they, could, they could put covenants in there that would protect the snowmobile trails, allow for certain reroutes if needed. Um, you know, that could be done. And perhaps at the time of Woodbury, they decided that this letter contingent upon those types of covenants being in the plan, is it okay if I comment on this comment? Just offer some more information about that. Um, so Evie Hyde, the Meyer family, has been actively trying to conserve um, that land and, and uh, other holdings of theirs in Woodbury for at least 10 years that I know of. And the Woodbury Select Board, uh, Woodbury Conservation Commission has written letters of support for the different conservation programs that they've, they've been mainly pursuing um, with the help of the Vermont Land Trust uh, conservation easements through the, uh, it's a federal program called the uh, Forest Legacy Project or program. And the particular name for this chunk of land um, is the Worcester Forest uh, Legacy Project. Um, a number, a number of years ago, um, they were 13th out of 12 uh, for um, right, project applications that were uh, submitted. So they missed it by one. And over the past um, several years, um, or actually the last maybe four or five years, there have been different segments of that that the Vermont Land Trust has submitted to this Forest Legacy Program that have been awarded. Um, the cons not the conservation easement itself, but they were, um, I don't know what the right word is. They weren't, they were, um, it was granted that they could do this, that they would do this through the, the federal program. Um, and nothing has really been finalized. Um, there's the chunk that's under consideration now. The, there's a chunk in Elmore that's a part of this um, project. Um, those were, um, judged, uh, you know, they got the award. Um, 
And then there's a, another chunk of land on the northern part of Woodbury that encompasses uh, Nichols Pond, um, East Long Pond, over to uh, Route 14 uh, west. And then, and everything has just kind of been um, st stalled. Um, so, um, and I, I don't know whether they approached the uh, Wilderness Trust or whether the Wilderness Trust approached them. Um, but I think, um, and this is just speculation on my part, so I probably shouldn't even say it, but I think the Meyer family just got kind of tired of waiting. Um, but I, I shouldn't, you know, I don't know that for certain. But so they have been actively working to try to get conservation easements on this property um, and other properties of the EB High Holdings in, in Woodbury. So, um, I sure. I, I would submit that that doesn't really speak to the question. Okay. The question was if uh, the Meyer family had been approached by the town of Woodbury and asked if they would put covenants on this property that would protect. Wildlife yeah, the Meyer family didn't approach the town about that. He asked if the town were to approach the Meyer family. Uh, so I can, okay. I can give you my read on this circumstance. We were just given this a month ago, about a month ago. A month and ago. it was sort of presented as, do you support this grant application? That's all we were really given. So no, we haven't. And, and uh, I've heard other comments that those would all, I agree with you, I think they would all be things that we could and should do if we had been asked to be participating in the project. And it's one of my objections to the process, which I made at the last meeting, was uh, why we hadn't been contacted a long time ago uh, to be part of this process, because I just feel like um, we've been presented with a false choice, that it's either this and it's the only thing that could possibly be done. And, and Although I've read, I've read everybody's emails and heard the comments, I'm, I also wish to have the land uh, preserved, but uh, I guess my idea of preserving it is different than the current proposal. Um, I'm more of a uh, working landscape, hunting, that, let, you know, unfortunately it's been presented to us as a kind of a support or don't support it for this grant application. It's my understanding they have uh, five million dollars of grant funding already if I'm not misspeaking, four and a half, four and a half million, close enough, from private sources. So, and we've just been asked to weigh in um, on this one million dollar grant. Um, my, my, agree with you a hundred percent. My, my view of this, because of the way it's been presented, is is a no only because I wish we had been engaged so we could have had some of these conversations. Because I just feel like, um, you know, I don't want to be pit against the, the people that support it, because I also support pr uh, protecting the land. But I think it could be done a whole lot better, because I think um, with everybody sitting here, we probably have a lot more in agreement than we have in disagreement. And that's kind of what I mean by the false choice. It's just, you, it's either this or that. It's this or they're building Walmart on the hill. You know, that's kind of the way it's been presented. And, and uh, does that kind of help you? I mean, I feel the same way you do. I wish we had been asked, but we have, basically tonight to say yes or no, unfortunately. Um, so there's not a lot of opportunity for that. Have you been told about the rush is? Why, why it has to be well, I guess the grant applications are due on a particular day. There's a deadline for, yeah. the, for the grant application. Yeah, I just, the whole thing is just really unfortunate in my view. Because everybody here had some great, great comments. I just wish we could have included it in something, but there's really no opportunity for that. So will, it, will it ultimately be privately owned? Yes. 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 Even with all these grants and yeah, and hence my next objection is taxpayer funded without a lot of taxpayer input. How much? How much? What's 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 roughly the percentage of the grant compared to the private donations um, as far as the purchasing price goes? So the uh, the price for the property uh, is six and a half million dollars. Um, One million dollars will is what the grant. In, in is for, and the rest of the money is, is um, through uh, private donations. Do you guys know who the private donors are? No. Uh, no. no. We, can, we can ask, but we don't know. I think if you have so, a comment so, over here. Yeah, I'd like to say to Peter, what's the win win for Woodbury if you sign this? No. I don't it's, think it is. It's a win. basically just a letter of support for a grant. Um, 
So the, they're going to purchase the land. In the they, they, they have already signed a purchase and sales agreement. Yes. Did you ever think of negotiating with them? We we are buying it. Um, it no, that no, was no, between the, the Meyer family. To agree with the grant, maybe ten percent for Woodbury. Uh huh. It would have been nice, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Isn't this the grant that comes from the? Uh, Vermont Housing, Housing and Conservation Board. And that's funded by ta property tax transfers. Mm -hmm. right. Still taxed by money. Right. Yes. Well, so is current use, so is the Homestead Act. Yeah. If Absolutely. you want Homestead Act. You can call it green all day long, but it's still taxed by your money. Mm -hmm. It's funded by Woodbury. It's still taxed by your money. Yes. Well, you'll have to get a closure on it. I guess it's it's taxpayer money that's set aside for housing and or conservation projects. So if the trust doesn't get this money, then some other conservation project somewhere else in Vermont will. That money is designated um, for for projects like this. So Stephen? <laughs> There's still people on the list too, so yeah. people on the list, I will get to you eventually here. But. If, if I may, I, my, my comment that, that, I, that I came to make tonight addresses this, this conversation that's come up right now. And that is to philosophical objections and especially to, to people that just oppose this project. I would say, let's not be philosophers, but strategists. So what's the objective? The objective is to maintain public access to Woodbury Mountain and to participate in the management planning. So here are the facts. The Northeast Wilderness Trust has already raised four of the 6.5 million they need to purchase the property. According to their 2020 financial statements, they have nearly $15 million in assets approximately 1.4 million in cash, nearly approximately 1.5 million in pledged assets. They were founded in 2002. They've already preserved or conserved 46 properties, including 10 in Vermont. We can all conclude that they will buy this property with or without the grant. So why support this grant? Because VHCB, Vermont Housing and Conservation Board, if they are involved, the public will be guaranteed in perpetuity, at bare minimum, dispersed pedestrian access and participation in the management planning. So I would say, let's not be passive philosophers, but active strategists and support this grant so VHCB and likewise ourselves can stay on the land and stay involved in the plan. Thank you. Thank you. So Norman, uh, go ahead, and then Mike, and we'll get back to you on the list, okay? Okay, so I just wanted to, uh, you know, there is a video that they're going to the questions and write a letter and, and call out the kind of things that they would like to see in the easement that, or, or comment is that, BHCB will put those into the into the agreement, or they won't get the money. You know, that's, mm -hmm. they they do work. They do that in all their agreements. They're not, you know, uh, A&R is uh, on their board, and Fish and Wildlife is. Uh, we'll see you at that hunting rights and reserves and so on. So, or they won't get the money. So I don't. But in the letter from the select board, you can, if, if you write the letter of support, you can pull out the kind of thing that you think is required. I, Personally, I'd rather see uh, the plan stay as it's been, you know, uh, at the working park. And they might have done a great job of that and so on. But nothing says it's going to stay that way. Um, it could easily go in a different direction. And this will ensure that it will be available. I think, uh, anyhow, those are my thoughts. So I think I kept it under a minute. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, Michael. Um, I guess. I just want to say that, you know, they're asking for our support to use tax dollars um, to purchase this land. And I really didn't feel, um, I kind of came slightly opposed to it, and then I heard some good comments the last meeting, and I was kind of left here pretty much ready to change my mind and support it. I was kind of, you know, well, lesser two eagles, some of them were to come along and buy it, you know, and they were doing 
a lot of good reservations. Sometimes I think it's a little more important. Um, but I didn't feel like they were honest with us. Like, so regardless of how you feel about what they say they want to do, I'm not sure it really matters. Because, you know, they said, and I'll quote the Wildlands Partner, uh, Partnership Coordinator from that organization, Northeast Wilderness Trust doesn't deny anyone hunting permission. When asked directly if she could explain what the purpose of the registration permit system was, she said it's for keeping in touch and building community. But they seem to be bending over backwards to ignore the fact, and, or to not say, that they have a lengthy list of regulations for hunting that go well above what the state requirements are. Like they were, really, you can't go back and watch the video of that meeting and then look at their set of published rules and say that they were being honest and forthright with us. And they're asking for our support. They should be honest. Even, you know, one of the select board members said, oh, well, we haven't decided on any rules yet in reference to hunting. But, hey, we don't get to decide. They get to decide. They said that they can change those rules from what they said they, said they are whenever they want. And, um, you know, sorry. <laughs> um, they have decided on rules. So there was, you know, a certain amount of seems like misinformation or disinformation at the last meeting. So I think, you know, summing it up, I could say a lot more, that I wish we had more time to discuss this, to find out more about what the rules are in terms of how they can change, you know, what restrictions there are, you know, forever on this land or whether they can just change the wind blows. And um, if we do have to go ahead if you guys do decide to go ahead and write this letter tonight and support it um, without more time for, to find out more about this in discussion, that I would hope you would try to include some kind of statement in the letter. I know it's not binding in any way, but just, you know, saying that we really hope that our support is sort of contingent upon them keeping access and perpetuity for recreational purposes, hunting purposes, and Grant, I would like to see them say something about, you know, no development on the ridge line because in terms of the wilderness preservation aspect, they were strictly emphasizing the value of the lowland wilderness while they say we have plenty of preserved, you know, high altitude wilderness. That's not very important to them, but climate change really is. And so you could really see someone who's saying that the value of the ridge line as wilderness isn't really that important. but. Climate change is that maybe we need, you know, a ridge line wind projects in there to fight climate change to provide clean energy. And you know, I would rather not see it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, Justin, Justin Brown. <laughs> so I'm here to strongly urge you guys to not write another recommendation. One is to basically touch on what he said about time. They're very deceiving in all of that. So that right there, I mean, if they're going to be deceiving to us about that, what else are they not going to be honest and forthright? Secondly, it's a 5013 c company, which means they're tax exempt, so they don't pay a whole lot of taxes for this. Um, and they also want to continue to keep land in use, land use, which it won't be in land use, and they want to get a tax break because of it. So I don't think that they should be able to keep them in use if they're not going to actually log it and do what the actual definition of land use is. So that's why I would strongly urge you to not write the letter of recommendation. And also, they have partnered with these other trusts in the wild carbon program. And it is a way for them to create an income, basically. They will be selling carbon credits to whether it be the government or anybody that will be producing any carbon. So they'll be profiting off that as well. So at the end of the day, I don't see how this is of any benefit to the townspeople, considering the president of the company, not only does he live in Massachusetts, he's from Massachusetts, and it seems like there's an awful lot of out-of-state money influencing what goes out in Vermont. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else wish to offer a comment? We have about um, 10 minutes. We got Elizabeth Higgins over here. Okay. Elizabeth? I thought, um, this gentleman here was right on with 
you know, asking about trying to get some easements and covenants put in place. Um, and if you're in a lot of talk, like, you know, this is a yes or no question, we haven't been asked our opinion, we've just been asked yes or no. But that doesn't mean that we as a town can't be proactive about approaching them and saying these are our concerns. Will you work with us if you want our support? Um, that's it. Mm -hmm. Yes, with the orange, I think a person with the orange, I say hand, but I can't quite see whose body it's connected to. Um, I, I wanted to stick up a little bit for the, the woman who worked with Bob at News. I saw a girl who wasn't trying to be deceitful to the <coughs> or any residents of the area. I saw a girl who was trying to bridge the gap, who saw a lot of anger and knows a lot of allies in her organization who are hunters and just was really worried about that. So she answered quickly and you know was on the spot. It wasn't her job to share what was going on. She was just there, really scared about the divide that she saw and answered the best that she could in that moment. So that's what I wanted to share. I would think that the representative of the company, you know, they should know the information that is very simple to look at. Her job is outreach. Any other comments at all? Um, Matt. Uh, I made comments previously in writing and in the last meeting, so I'll just be brief. I just wanted to make the statement that uh, there's been a lot of opposition from uh, folks interested in hunting. I just want to make the point that the hunting community is not monolithic on this. I'm an avid hunter myself, including on Woodbury Mountain. I fully support the project, period. Mm -hmm. John? Yeah, I, uh, clarification, I don't live in Woodbury any longer. I used to live here. I serve on the cattle select board, um, and we've conserved some properties in our town working through the Vermont Housing Conservation Board. Uh, I just want to reaffirm what has been said that if you were to support this project as a suggested outcome, but also say you would like to see certain conditions placed on the grant agreement and ultimately in the deed uh, as a contingency to receive the grant. I would think the Housing Conservation Board, if there were reasonable requests, uh, would go along with that. We certainly did that with the farm, the Armstrong farm in Calus. Uh, there was, uh, they had their mind, the land trust in this case, had a vision for what they wanted to see and we strongly disagreed. There was concern about renewable energy on the ridge line here. That's a valid concern. We had the same, the same concern on the Armstrong farm because at the time the land trust was allowing on conserved farms uh, build out of solar field uh, farms on the fields. And we said, no way. And so we, we got added restrictions. We supported the project. We wanted to see the project go forward like you all. And the land trust actually ended up agreeing with us. And we then attended Select Board Can attend the Housing Conservation Board, they meet, I don't know if it's monthly or periodically, to go over the grant applications, and you can then speak to the project as well. So you all can direct your select board and ask that they present your, your hopefully, coalesced position on that. So I, I think you still have a lot of opportunity to provide input, and the board will listen, and you have an opportunity to folks. You have a property that's private right now, that will continue to be in private hands, although a private nonprofit. But by having the benefit to you all, by having the Cons Housing Conservation Board put money in there, um, is that it actually guarantees you access to what is private property otherwise. It's also federal. I would uh, guess that because almost all the money from, that goes to the Housing Conservation Board with this re in this regard is 50% federal match money. So um, if it's a million bucks, say, there's $500,000 in federal money. Um, we access that federal money for another conservation project, the Memorial Hall and Cows. And they're all about making sure um, public access is provided pretty full bandwidth. Um, I understand you're really concerned about the nibbling around the edges, not to minimize the concerns about restricting some restrictions on hunting. But I, I would just encourage you to, to 
go forward with an open mind. This is a real opportunity for your town. Um, and I think the board will listen to you. Um, Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, Jack. I think this budget is going to happen whether, whether the VHCD supports or not. The Northeast Wilderness Trust is a big enough organization. They're going to find money. They're going to buy the property. They're going to, it's going to become private property just as it is now. The important thing is that we engage with the Northeast Wilderness Trust. I hope you write a letter of support for the grant, but after that, we need to stay engaged with this trust to raise concerns that all these people have raised. So I would suggest you write two letters, one in support of the grant and another directly to the Northeast Wilderness Trust, asking them to be involved with the town of Woodbury and how they manage that property in the future. As private property owners, they can change their mind at any time. So I think they need to feel, they need to understand how we feel about how that property is used. So write two letters. Encourage the Northeast Wilderness Trust to maybe a committee to be formed of Woodbury people to, to continue a dialogue through the years with the trust so that they know how we feel about how that property should be used. Thank you. Thank you. So we have about two or three minutes um, left for comments. Is anyone else? Yes, Diana. Sorry, Jack, but what you said about the, it's going to be private property so they can do anything they want. In a trust, Jack and I are on the board for the Northern River Plan. <coughs> but once those trust documents are there, they can't just do anything they want. Well, I think they'll. There'll, there'll be some leeway within those documents. They might be the biggest landowner in the northeast of the United States, right? Or maybe there's bigger land masses in Maine. I don't know. They all have to be all Just a big chunk, right? What's your word, then? What's my word? Yeah. Well, it seems like. Um, I like the idea of conserving the land, but I don't like the idea of taxpayer money paying for it, and then you can't really do anything up there. So that's, it's more of a, it seems, it seems kind of pointless, I guess. And it has been awesome that the Myers have owned it this long. It has been natural wilderness up there. It has, you know, been a good zone for people to hike, ski, hunt. Um, so I guess my concern is change. Continue this discussion outside, please. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. A last call for a comment. Go ahead. Just for a point on money, we should see. Um, if the driver really wants to see land conserved, 
I think there's been a lot of talk about opportunity, and I, the opportunity this select board has is an opportunity to advocate their constituency on both fronts by writing a letter with these recommendations to put covenants on the property that would ensure that all the management is properly um, carried out by the laws of the state rather than these really arbitrary um, ideas that, that this organization has. And you could also put that in a letter to the Myers family and make a request for the Myers family in the video. Um, you know, you could do that with the HCD and the Myers family and, and the trust and send out three letters for that. But you have a unique opportunity to advocate for the concerns of your constituents in, in this letter. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, I'd like to close the comments and, um, and then uh, the three of us can share our thoughts and discussions. Is that okay with everyone at this point? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, who would like to go first? I started once. <laughs> okay. I'll start again. Go ahead. <laughs> so so as, as, I, as you heard, I, I appreciate everybody's comments. Um, I mean, I, I, at this point, with the short time limit, I'm not in favor of sending a less, a, yeah, let me spit this out again, a yes letter. I would be in favor of sending them a letter with our concerns and the things we would like to be included if we were to send a yes letter. Um, no. So that's kind of where I'm at, because I, I agree with a lot of the things I've heard tonight, and um, I think we should send them a letter, but it shouldn't be the yes until we Oh, yeah, have our really concerns remember. aired. December 7th, I think. Right, it's pretty simple. Thank you, Paul. Go mess with the road. I think that pretty much sums it up, right? Right, which may hold yeah. up the grant it's a little high. bit. How often does this have to be? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's right. just my thought because I've heard a lot of valid things. There's and, a lot and, of private property up there, too. It's yeah. I mean, I've spent, I've spent several hours reading comments, and um, a lot of people are, they seem pretty close together on this, so I, I uh, I would prefer that we just, if we send a letter, the letter just says, here's the concerns that have been shared by mm -hmm. the citizens of Woodbury. And for us to send a, a, a yes, we would need these addressed before we could say yes. That would be my view. Um, Can we make a list of those concerns right now for that letter before Walter Christian online? Uh, Let's hear. I want to hear what yeah. you guys have to say too. But okay. I, I'm All right. So, for that. do you want to go next, or okay? So, um, I just want to state up front that personally, I support um, the Wilderness Trust, um, and also from our meeting last time, and from the comments that have come in over the past two weeks. Um, there is significant uh, numbers uh, in town of people that do support um, this transfer to the Wilderness Trust. Um, we had, I think Chris mentioned, 73 comments. I didn't quite come up with that number, but I came pretty close. And there were basically 57 comments that I had come up with in support of um, us, the select board writing a letter of support. And there were uh, five comments in that recommended that we not support it. Um, and then with a show of hands at the last meeting, there were about 50 or 60 people here. I'm not sure exactly how many, but um, with a show of hands, there was a pretty clear majority of people that were in support of, um, of the, uh, uh, the select board writing a letter of support. So, I'm, so I have my personal bias that I um, just shared, and I also am aware of what the town residents have indicated to me as a select board member, what they would like to see happen. Um, I am aware that uh, you know, with the restrictions that are uh, placed on hunting, that it does fly against the Agency of Natural Resources and the Fish and Wildlife Department with their um, you know, management of, of all the uh, hunting species, whether it's through hunting or trapping. Um, I, but I also have a, a memory of um, the Town Conservation Commission doing a, um, tr a keeping track training program with Susan Morse and the key species that we were looking at in, these, in this tracking um, that we did and the training that we did were basically uh, bear, fisher, um, bobcat, 
uh, the predator species, and at that time also moose, because uh, when we did that, which was probably 20 years or more, um, the moose were kind of on the rise. Um, and the reason that uh, keeping track had us looking for those species and, and monitoring um, sign of them is that they were called the key indicator species where if those species were present then um, they indicated and this is through science, fish and wildlife, biology that any of the species that they prey on are also in good balance. So I'm, you know, I understand that there are restrictions on, and the restrictions are based only on, on pr the predator species that, that, that are found. There's um, deer, turkey, partridge, squirrel, rabbit. Um, it's okay to hunt those. Um, and I think the reasoning is, is that you know, they, they want this to be a chunk of land that basically just reverts to uh, a kind of wild nature management. And it does fly against what the Agency of Natural Resources fish and wildlife have created throughout the state. Um, but I think in protecting those predators, my thought is, is that they're also trying to keep a, a, a natural balance for all of the other critters that, uh, that they prey on. So I, I sort of understand um, why they have those restrictions on that land. Um, and you know there are plenty of other places in Woodbury and around where we can hunt um, and trap whatever we please. Um, so to me, um, you know, having something like that in Woodbury, and it's not just Woodbury; it's Woodbury, Elmore, Worcester, and a little chunk of Hardwick. Um, it just seems like a very unique environment, um, and I would love to see that happen. I, you know, I, I also hunt, but. Um, not a lot. I fish. Not a lot. I wish I had more time. When I'm done with a select board, maybe I will. Yeah. Um, but uh, my main, uh, you know, I spend a lot of time in the woods, mostly in Woodbury, and basically I just like to be out there uh, walking, sitting, and kind of waiting to see what shows up. Um, that's my enjoyment of being in, in a forest. And to have an opportunity to have a place like that, in my backyard, um, selfishly, that's again, that's why um, I'm in favor of that. Um, and I just also want to point out the history that the Meyer family has with Woodbury. The town forest that we had was donated to us by uh, Hugo Meyer, the, uh, I'll call him the patriarch of the Meyer family. The Woodbury fund that the town benefits from has also been set up by the Meyer family for the, for the benefit of, of Woodbury. The post office building um, was basically restored um, through um, donations from, from the Meyer family. Um, and the Meyer family, which is E.B. Hyde, you can say the two pretty much in the same thing. It's, it's a, a large family now, um, and the, that family, every family member basically controls what happens with the E.B. Hyde land. Um, I don't, I don't think that they, I think that they have done their due diligence in in uh, you know vetting this um, with the Wilderness Trust, um, they, I think they did, did get kind of impatient with the forest legacy process and the sort of federal government just kind of turtle pace that they go at. Um, but and I know that Andrew Meyer has expressed to me that the Meyer family felt that this would be an asset to the town, um, and I agree with them. Um, and I think it's, again, just another step or another instance of the Meyer family trying to gift the town of Woodbury with a very unique uh, setting in Woodbury um, that, would, that would very much distinguish um, the town and probably be a draw for many people in the state, outside of the state, um, to come here and walk, hike on that land. People have mentioned the concern about the roads. The roads that go through that property are all town-owned class four roads at the moment. That's not gonna change. There's no way um, legally that the trust could do that. Um, they have expressed that the snowmobile trail that exists in there will also remain as it is. Um, and I am willing to put into this letter, if we vote to support it, um, some of the concerns, or any of the concerns that people have, you know, have expressed tonight, and, and perhaps we can come up with that, 
with that list um, as just expressing them as our concerns to the, the Housing and Conservation Board um, going forward. Um, and that's, that's pretty much pretty much all I, I had to say on it, and I've probably said too much. Um, so I'll hand it on to you, Chris. So I'm just going to say that we did get a letter from Elmore that their select board did completely support this. I, that's the other thing I wanted to say. But oh, so the town, excuse me, Chris. The town of Elmore, the town of Worcester, and the town of Hardwick, the select board members, all voted unanimously to provide a letter of support to the trust for this, this project. Oh, but sorry, Chris, I didn't mean to interrupt, but that was, that was the other thing I was trying to think of. You can go ahead. Probably. Here's the thing. Um, there was a letter from Elmore to the select board members that said that they would support this project. Um, but then we had a letter from the town of Worcester that said they would not support this project. Yeah, no, I did point to Justin. Okay, all right, sorry. Justin, thank you. Thank you. Um, I hunt in this property and I live in a place that is got wilderness management that is also adjacent to this land so um, I don't really have an offer for you all because I'm just a select board person so I'm going to bide my time and I'm going to write comments down sound good? so start putting your hands up so was that a vote? Yes or no? That is not a vote. I don't, I, none of us are voting. What are we doing? Not yet. We're not voting. We're going to vote tonight. So We are going to vote tonight. We're going to vote tonight, but we're not voting right now. So I'm taking my time for your comments. Yeah, pull your mask off. All right, sorry. Say it again. I'll take my time for your comments. <clears throat> Didn't we ahead, just sir. do that? I, just, I got one comment on the, Go ahead. My, on the Myers family. You just tell about their past history of what they've done for the town, which they have done a lot, probably more than most people. But that was Hugo Myers. That was the first generation. The second generation is a totally different bunch of people. You have two Myers that live in Vermont that support that this land does not go to these people. The rest of the family lives out of state, have outvoted them, and that's how this came about. Not the ones that live here. That's absolutely true. And, and how do you know that, Dennis? Through the National Foundation, they've, they've been talking about it. Uh -huh. uh, I'll take the next person who wants to give me a comment. I've also talked to one of the Meyer family here in Vermont. And he said the same exactly. Can you tell me who that was, Justin? Close to okay. Next person, please. Sir? After this is being redundant, I think there is a win win here. And the win win is if the select board chooses to put in the letter that they would like to see those covenants. Yes. Well, I think that's what Chris wants to write down is what yeah. the, what the that's consensus is. That's what I'm trying to, trying, to that's trying to get a sense of, if, if I may. Go ahead, sir. I would just say that you know, it looks like the mother probably didn't have some private guests, and I would hope that you guys write, you know, requesting the Housing and Conservation Board to, in some way, in return for this grant, try to make sure that we maintain access to hunting and fishing, that um, we uh, maintain access for, you know, other recreational opportunities, whatever, snowshoeing, skiing, walking, blah, blah, blah and that um, there's some kind of attempt to ensure that no ridgeline developments such as industrial wind or anything like that happen. So, Mike, I'm, can I? I just want to address your concern about the ridge line. You know, it it is a ridge line, but in this grand scheme of high elevation, it doesn't. It's not high enough. So that ridge line is part of the lowland. Um, uh, forest block that they're talking about, um, and I I didn't hear them mention anything at all about putting any kind of uh, 
Yeah. 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 That's right. Okay. It should be right. there in one. Okay. It's fun right. to put it in. Right. May I just make a quick comment? Sorry, Mr. Brayman. Point of clarification to Michael's statement. Uh, Mr. Brayman. Meyer and Andrew and I think Steve. Well, a while ago they had proposed the wind turbine on the Mountain. Um, or Buffalo Mountain. Buffalo. So that the ridge is high enough to, to generate electricity using wind turbines. Whether it's economically feasible is probably more what Michael's talking about. But, you know, FYI, who knows as technology progresses whether or not that would be viable or not. Right. So and I, I did mention at our last meeting that the Meyer family was approached um, by a developer, as John just mentioned, and they came and met with different people in town, uh, the select board, the Conservation Commission, other people um, wanting to get their opinion on whether or not the town um, would welcome wind turbines on the ridgeline. And, and obviously they were told across the board no, and the Meyer family uh, returned um, that no to the developer. Um, so that was the end of, of that. Um, Uh, the question of the snowmobile, does anybody who snowmobiles up there know whether there are trails that are not part of the class four road already? Because if yeah. that's what they there use is. as a class four road, then that's kind of an non-issue. There, there's a vast trail. There's a vast trail that runs through the. But is it? But it's on the, class it's on the road. It's on the class no, four road. No. There, part of it's off the road. It's, it's part of it's not on the road. Oh, oh. no. There's a large block, the water leg that goes from. The top of the very downtown. Yeah. Worcester, I believe, yeah. is not. Yeah. Right. There's some well, part that that's a, not. That's not. Is that a class four road also? No, no, no it's sure. not. I'm not sure if there's a trail. Yeah. So I think there's a consensus we'd like to maintain. Yes. All right. So I got that. As, as so it's a vast trail system that's not on class four roads. Got it. <coughs> Someone else, please. I got another one. Sir. How much do we lose in tax money on that property of the town? It'll, it, well, as we talked about in our last meeting, it'll remain the same as it is now in a current use program. So. These people are tax exempt? They are tax exempt, and there is a, a form uh, within the current use um, terms that allows uh, tax nonprofit um, trusts or entities uh, with cons conserved land um, is considered another aspect of current use. So it would remain the same as it always has been as far as the, um, the current use and the taxes that the trust would pay would be the same as what uh, E.B. Hyde has paid in the, in the past. Go ahead, Norman. Yeah, well, um, it's been mentioned before. I mean, I put this in the oh, pull your mat, I can it, um, I mentioned it before, but I got uh, to that the wilderness trust, but also the idea of setting up a, a local advisory committee that they keep with on some type of regular basis to get feedback and out. Mm -hmm. What's going on with land, I think, would be a good idea and not a bad suggestion. On my watch, we have two more minutes for this. Skip. I'd just like to make a call. But Dennis alluded to that she said that she did some research and they could, in fact, sell carbon credits in the open market. That was me. Oh, it was sorry. Tim. Was you. Uh, is that true? And if, if it is true, then we should put something in that letter. If they do sell these carbon credits in the open market, that the town of Woodbury should be able to access a portion of those funds. Anyone else? Comments that I can add? We have quite a quite a list, but anything else? Can I just quickly ask a question? I'm not a very resident, but I just wonder. I know a couple of years ago they were talking about upgrading the road, possibly with the class four road grants and all that stuff, and whether or not it would have to be reclassified as a trail or whether the town would have to be upgraded. If that conversation comes back around and the town is forced to put in X amount of dollars to upgrade the road or give it up as a trail, does that mean once it becomes a trail, there's no more access? 
Uh, I think you, you, you missed the conversation about that earlier, Laura. Um, a trail is still a town highway um, and uh, still town owned and there would be no change in the use of uh, that road at all. Can you, use, can you use motorized vehicles on a trail? Yes. 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 I mean, a lot of people, when they hear the word trail, they think, oh, you can only walk on it. But it's basically another designation of a road where the town is, is able to give up any type of maintenance um, uh, obligations to the state. Um, class four road, a town is obliged to fix culverts, fix bridges, and with the municipal roads general permit to solve any erosion problems in, on hydrologically connected sections of road. So turning it up to a trail that would um, uh, relieve the town of any <coughs> maintenance obligations at all. And on the Ho Chi Minh Trail, um, that would be a good thing. Um, yeah. But it, it, and at the, at the point now, it is still a class four road. It hasn't been reclassified to a trail. Um, go ahead, Justin. If it were to be reclassified, would it then be off on this motorized road? No, 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 it would not. It's the towns cannot, unless they pass an ordinance on any class four road, you can use ATVs, off-road vehicles. And the same is true for trails. The town would have to uh, create an ordinance uh, with that restriction. It's a, it's a state law that um, ATVs or off-road vehicles can use any class four road in any town in Vermont. Okay, I'm afraid that we're going to have to cut this off. So okay, we move on yeah. To the last bit of town business. Is that fair enough? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. So um, now it's time to decide. Well, my viewpoint is that we should only send a letter asking for what they're going to commit to before we send a yes to anything. I don't it seems see like that you're in a strong negotiating point if you say yes, and we hope you're going to look at these things. I think we should send them a letter that says. So it seems like we have some stipulations, gentlemen before they get a yes from me. Uh huh. Well, by the time we meet again as a select board, the, the grant deadline will be... But that is not a situation recreated, you know what I'm saying? We, we've been given a short time frame, and I think all of these people have very valid <clears throat> concerns that we mm -hmm. need to bring before the uh, buyer, I guess, well, and uh, the see what they say, because okay. I mean, I, I mean, that's just my view of it, and I, because I, that could put a pause on it for them and get what we want or they're going to move forward without our approval, uh -huh. which either way. Well, the alternative is to write a letter of support with the um, contingencies that uh, Chris has um, made a list of. Right, but I'm just not in support of that because it's okay. not negotiating from a position of strength. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I don't think we have a whole lot of no, but what little bit we have area to negotiate. No. Do you have room for one more comment? Uh, we'll take we'll take sure. one more. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I'm just saying that we're here because we want to vote. Two letters. Yeah, do it. You're going to miss your grant deadline. You're not going to get your money. We, we we town doesn't get any money. We don't get any money. Yeah, it's not our money. But right, but if we need this grant money and this is what we're here for, shouldn't we make the vote tonight? We are going to make a vote. We're making a vote tonight. But not, not in front of us. Nope, no, we're making it. We're, we're going to make it right we're now. Chatting, oh, okay. We're chatting about it right now, Ms. Carroll. Yeah, everybody oh, knows where I live. That's why I'm here. All right. So, um, so you've got to call for a vote. Right. I would like to um, make a motion that we uh, provide a letter of support um, to the uh, Northeast Wilderness Trust using uh, and including the um, contingencies that Chris has just gathered from the folks that are here. Um, that's my, um, so technically a chair cannot make the motion, but that, that's the way I would like the motion to be worded. Yes. Oh. Um, okay. Like um, a yes with contingencies. Okay, so, yeah. Chris, so, so Chris Codius is going to make a motion to write a letter of support using a specific set of contingencies outlined by the town of Woodbury, present here, in support of this motion. 
The motion is. Okay. Do, uh, do I hear a second? Well, I'll second it. All those in favor of the motion, as Chris uh, just read it, uh, say aye. 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 And all those opposed? No. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. So the motion is passed, um, and the uh, select board will write a letter of support with the uh, contingencies that Chris has gathered from everyone here tonight. Um, the, the letter will be sent to the trust and will also be made public. Um, and um, I guess what I would like to do um, is with the letter is have us all read it beforehand um, before it gets sent. Okay. Do you want to write that letter? You just volunteered, my friend. Okay. <laughs> I'll start with the letter. Wait, okay. so, uh, so let me just put this out as a select board person. Before you all leave. Real quick, he just wants to make sure he's got to, it right here. To, wait, can we? <clears throat> yeah, we have one person with a camera. Before you guys leave. Sorry. Uh, I was just seeking clarification, so the letter will say that your support is contingent upon addressing those concerns. That is correct. The con set of concerns that I have, plus the set of concerns that I've written down from these other components of this. So, this is. So we have a relatively short deadline to produce this letter of support. Um, like Wait a minute, what, what did you say? Days? Mm -hmm. Wait, hold on. I, I was just clarifying that the, the support is contingent upon addressing the concerns. Mm -hmm. That was what the motion said. Is it? Yeah. Yes, it is. No, like, yeah. yes, it is. Yeah. Yes. There was support, and then you want them to look at it. They will be included in the, in the letter of but support. It's not, it's not support if. Support and please look at it. These will be listed, yes. So it's not support if, it's support right. with these contingencies. Yeah, support support with these support contingencies. It's not support if these contingencies are. That's not what the motion is. The contingencies will be included in the letter of support. Can you read the motion back to us? Just to clarify, what did he put down? What's the motion say? Do you have it right there? Not to put you on the spot. <laughs> So it says support with contingencies, with specific, not contingent on support. With con specific contingencies. It's okay. Was 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 it support if these the conditional support? That's what I heard. It's conditional support. So if they're not willing to meet those contingencies, are you going to then retract your yes? No. This, this, this letter it's goes to the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board, not to the trust. Not to the trust. And Correct. we will be listing you know, the contingencies that we've gathered tonight. And it will be the uh, Vermont Housing and Conservation Board that will address the contingencies that we've listed with the Northeast Wilderness Trust. Right. And. And I can tell you that they have similar concerns. So um, some of these things are concerns that the uh, Housing and Conservation Board also have. Thank this you guys for doing that. It, it makes me feel a lot better about the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So my request to you all, okay, is that as soon as I write this letter, I'll ask Skip to put it out. So that it's very clearly available to everyone. We'll give some chance for quick comments for modifications of that letter. And then, uh, okay. And then the best we can do is you have, we voted it as a letter of support. It's two to one. Sorry, it's two to one. So the select board just voted, your select board just voted two to one that we're going to write a letter of support of some type, right? Exactly, that's not what the motion said. Really? I, excuse me. Go ahead, sir. I think what we need to do here is define contingent. We, we've got a misunderstandings about the, the purpose of this letter and the consequence of the letter. So 
let's, let's just clear it up. What, what do you mean by contingent? Go ahead, Michael. Um, basically, Chris has gathered a list of comments that people made of things that they would like to see um, addressed by the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board in this letter of support. That's what I understand to be the contingencies. Um, and, you know, Chris, you could read them to people, but, um, and this would be just, uh, it's, these aren't conditions for our support. These are suggestions that the select board has added to the letter of support for consideration by the, the, the housing and conservation. Correct. Yeah. What's that, Monty? Change your motion. Uh, we can't. We, we voted. We're done. Okay. These, co these uh, concerns will be in the letter and for the Housing and Conservation Board to consider. Okay. Yes? When I initially asked for clarification, I asked if the support was contingent upon addressing those concerns, and the gentleman on the motion yes. Well, then I'll let Chris, Chris answer that. That's not what we voted on. We voted on writing a letter, right? Oh, a letter of support. Our support doesn't actually, can't, can't be contingent on these specific topics. Why can't it? Why can't it? Why can't it? Why can't it? Um, we, we would have to actually meet with the conservation board. We would have to meet with the trust. Um, it would be a kind of a long, drawn-out negotiation, I would imagine. I, I spoke with Gus Healy today. Beg your pardon? I spoke with Gus Healy from BHD today. Uh-huh. And if you guys write that into your letter, that doesn't mean that the BHCB has to strong-arm them. But it gives me a chance to see the leverage to request for this coverage. Right. That's correct. So if you're... If you make your, which I, was what I understood to be, if you make your letter conditional on addressing concerns, right. then you're speaking from a form of strength, you're advocating for everybody, mm -hmm. you're still advocating for the project, and you've given the HCD something more to work with than maybe a little bit more control. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely true as far as I understand as well. But it's still a letter of support to move forward with the project. It tends, I mean, it tends why I wanted to is, negotiate first. I would support this if these conditions are met. That's a, a huge difference from saying I would support this and I'd like you to consider these concerns that we have. Like, that's a, a world of difference. So I'm just wondering, if, are you guys doing the former or the latter of the two scenarios that I just said? My understanding is more on the, the latter with the word with as opposed to if. Did we hear the motion again? Did you read that again? How loud from here? <laughs> the, the closest I didn't get it from the closest I got was um, the motion to write the letter of support to be written with specific contingencies. So specific contingencies. With. With, with specific with. contingencies. With. Right. Okay. Which is the list that we're working off of. And and that's what we that's what we just voted on. What about all the ones of us who would like you to see a letter with no contingencies? Raise your hand. <laughs> oh, you're by yourself. <laughs> Don't forget us. <laughs> it's good that we have diversity of opinions. <laughs> I mean, we did have pretty overwhelming support for the preserve project from the comments and from the show of hands that, that we received. So, I think for for to con include these contingencies is kind of a compromise with the folks that um, do have objections, trying to come to some kind of uh, middle point. So um, if you want to browbeat us on the language that we used more. Um, Monty? I'd like to be done with this. Browbeat me directly. Just as soon as you see the letter that I've developed, bring it to me. Okay, that's. I'll take it. Yeah. I'll take everybody's, everybody's comments. But I have a short time frame in the letter that we actually write. 
Uh, it'll be posted on the website. It'll be posted out by the post office uh, and a paper copy inside any place where we post any of the warnings or for agendas or normally, normally post everything. Thank yeah. you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you all. We really appreciate it.
Have fun. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. See you. John, can you wrap it up? We need to get kids out. Can you wrap up your discussion with Paul? We need to get back to you. Yeah, we're still reading. See We're trying to anyway. Okay. All right. So um, I know there are folks here from the library, and it's kind of about the time scheduled for that. So is it okay if we go to that first, and then we'll bounce back to the town highway and stuff? Okay. <laughs> so, Sarah. Okay. So um, the reason I'm here is to ask uh, for an increase in the town appropriations for the library. The town currently appropriates twelve thousand dollars a year. And we'd like to ask for another two thousand dollars per year. The last increase was in 2016, and the average librarian wages in Vermont have increased uh, 14 percent or more since then. And even at that point, our library director was underpaid. Um, I don't know how much everybody knows about the library, but when um, Brett left, we spent months and months and months trying to hire a new library director with no success. The wages we're offering to support some of the professionals. Um, the range of salaries for library directors in other all the surrounding area is anywhere from twenty to twenty-five dollars per hour. And they they are full time or near full time. So we're not asking for that kind of support. We're currently paying our director eighteen dollars an hour and our staff librarian 16 with no benefits. We'd like to be able to um, support $19 an hour if possible. And um, even at the $18 an hour, the only reason that will fit into the current budget is because there were some closures because of COVID early on in the year, so we're, we were a little uh, behind, but we quickly catch up. Um, the library is open right now 12 hours a week. But the director has duties outside of that 12 hours, and we're working towards seeing how many of those duties we can incorporate into work hours to try to save some money and conserve. But there's still things, Vermont Department of Libraries meetings, et cetera, that can't be done while you're working. Um, we've also been unable to hold Pine Records, our major fundraiser, for two years. We're hoping to hold it in March of 22, but that's you know, the way things are right now, we're kind of iffy on that. Um, we're at the end, near the end of our angel fund money. We have a little bit of that going into the next year's budget, but not the amount we've been using um, in past years, and then we'll have nothing for the following year. So we are looking at our budget. We have made cuts in some areas. We're looking at ways to pull in the hours to accommodate, but when we do that, we come down to that meeting two thousand dollars a month per year. Mm -hmm. Now, do we do we put that in our budget, or is it voted on at the? Um, it's 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 voted, it's voted as part of the budget. Yep. Okay. Yep. So our budget, I guess, I would, I have to submit our budget. To us. And you'll okay. see that yeah. after two thousand, that kind of. It's, it's in budget. the general fund. Um, I, I think it's a perfectly reasonable request. I agree. Yeah. It's it's. Not, a, comment. not that much of an increase that it would require, you know, if you were asking for like $30,000 a year from the 12000 then we probably would want to have that as a separate uh, warning on the town meeting agenda yeah. for, for the town to vote on. But, probably have to move out of town. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it's... it's you had to pick one very well. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the Money. Money. I just had a question. Out of those 12 hours that you're open, how much traffic, how much use is it? Um, we published the statistics in the meeting minutes every month, and I didn't bring that with me. Um, they posted at the town clerk's office and the library on the bulletin board down here, but there's not. Go ahead. Did the, 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 the library each month um, the chart of traffic um, usage of I have a thought in my head that it's two or three hundred books to check out people back because it's clear in my mind. I can see also uh, two of the days, which are Monday and Wednesday, 
the, um, the library's hours for coordinated school. The library, the library and the school is now the OSUESD. Um, but the new school district and library have a memorandum of understanding. There's collaboration between the library and the schools. The library helps the school administer that after school program. So some of that time is spent working with the school. And then it's open on Saturdays. And prior to COVID, Saturdays have been a popular day for gathering. But yeah, there was a children's hour that it was very, very well attended. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're very much wanting to get back to that. I mean, even um, if it's even if we're still masked and not gathering indoors in big groups on masks next year, hopefully we'll give them outside. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's a reasonable request. I, I do too. It's a reasonable request. Yeah. So I think we kind of have consensus. Uh, with the select board that that's a reasonable uh, request okay. and yep. we'll just uh, change the amount in the line, line item in the budget okay. which we'll be working on um, in December in December yeah. yep. we'll update up. our budget and send it in with that extra 2000 thank you thank fun you. time of yep. year okay <laughs> so um Chuck's turn Chuck's turn yeah town highway on the hot seat now oh boy well <laughs> as I'm sure everybody is sick of mud and potholes, but it's been a strange fall as far as being able to take care of the road. Thank you, go. Where, where we're at. It is what it is. It is ill. It froze and it's half froze. Yeah, and then it's raining. And if you try to grade it, it'll be a mud hole, so you can't touch it. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're done grading. Yeah. Um, all the equipment's ready to go for the winter. Everything's put away. Trucks chained up, the plows on. Uh, I got gave Mike a quote on that roller that for the uh, grant. For the grant, yeah. Okay. Which is right here. Uh, yeah, that's all together. Yeah. I've had a few calls that uh, small calls that we went. Well, the one over by Nelson Pond. Mm -hmm. I went over and fixed the ditch over there. I took a load of gravel and packed it flood. And I talked to a guy up on East Hill about filling the ditch in and plugging the culvert, and he fixed that today. So, mm -hmm. things are going pretty This thing goes on the back of the grader? No, no actually, it's on the truck. No, it's on the truck. It's on the front of the truck. It goes okay. on the truck. Okay. Yeah, the I, still gotta, I still gotta get with them, okay. but that covers the price. I wasn't sure when the grant had to had to be in and all that stuff. But it'll be made to go on the front of the truck and lift the hoist that used to lift the plow. Perfect. Okay. And there's two two quotes there, one for rubber tires and one for steel drum. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> um, if, they're, if they're generous, rubber tire ones the one to the Okay. If they're not, the steel drums. Okay. 2,500, 2,800 glasses or something. That's to knock your teeth out while you're driving version? Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody know you're coming down the road. Yeah, you'll hear them coming through. <laughs> we better go with the rubber tires because I don't want to hear it. <laughs> yeah, so we'll have to ban that from 5 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Okay. I guess that's about it. Okay. When do you ship out? Sometime next week. Okay. okay. Soon as my telephone quits ringing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I hope that we might work a little bit on the highway budget tonight, but, but with Brandy out, um, have you had a chance, and Greg's still deer hunting, I assume? Yeah, well, Greg and I went over pretty good anyway. Okay, all right. The biggest, the biggest thing is going to be whether you guys decide that we're going to own a class four road or not. If you go up on East Long and pull over through to the South Camp Road, you right. better at least double the budget. It's going to take for about, class four roads. For yeah. class four. Okay. Class four. It's going to take about 10 miles of load of gravel okay. just to have anything to work with after the day. So do you have uh, an actual budget kind of worked out that um, that we could look at? Um, do you want to try to meet before you leave for Florida? If you guys want to, yeah. Because okay. we could, um, obviously we'd have to, I know, um, I'm just thinking we could warn a special meeting that would be basically to go over the applications for the third full-time 
real crew member. When's that um, done? When's that done? It's Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving Day, is, Day is, the deadline. is the deadline. Yeah. So, and we have yeah. one one application so far that we've received, and and that may be it. Um, okay. But uh, so we could we could warn a special meeting for next week, I guess. Or yeah, when if when is the beginning of December? Wednesday. 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 Next Wednesday. A week, a week from, week from, from tomorrow. tomorrow. Wednesday. Okay. So if he's here, I could do next Wednesday. Is the soonest I could do it. Monday and Tuesday. I'm busy next week. Okay. Can you do next Wednesday? You're gonna be gone by then. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm going. You want okay. to plan for a special high right. budget meeting that night? Okay. The one thing you guys. I was thinking about the amount of work that got done this year as opposed to what has happened in the past years. They didn't haul any sand this year. No. no, I couldn't agree with you more. Well, they didn't need to haul any sand. Next year they probably will. No, but we give up that third guy hauling sand, you're not going to get all the work done. We're not going to get right. anything done. So, yeah. so we're going to need so, a number for what it's going to cost to do that because that's the trade off. Right. So. And Are we saying right. six o'clock again or seven? We can. What, what would work? What would be six better? is fine. Okay. Is that good for you, Chris? That's fine. We're gonna make it work. So that's Wednesday the first at six o'clock. Okay. So that'll be for or better idea if we should go to Florida with Chuck. There you go. Meet on his I don't want to go to Florida. We should meet on his porch. Sorry. He's got a porch out here. This is too hot. I like it right That's here. That's way better. <laughs> Brandy's not here to complain about the expense yet. So. Right. Yeah. Right. Wow. All right. So Wednesday the 1st. Yeah, 6, 6 p.m. And let's meet in the community room. All right. The library. Yeah. So that's a change. Yep. Community room. <clears throat> Okay. Because we actually get two weeks off for select board meeting because of the way the calendar works right. out. So, so we'll be uh, diff probably, so part of the meeting will be for interviews of. Um, oh, for the base. town highway employee too. Yeah. Whatever we got for people, yeah. And then to work to go over the budget, yeah. the town highway budget, basically. Um, and hopefully we can get. Um, do you have the actual? You know, usually um, Brandy would have created um, a town highway budget that has the, you have, okay, you have a copy of, of that, okay. Because we Is just that a, Robin, do you know if um, there are other copies of the thing that Chuck has in his hand so the select board can be able to look at it? I don't know, but I can get it to memory to my so we can just have Brandy print one off for us. Well, if if we have Brandy available to do that, that's a that's a question. I've got that. See, I have all of the same folks. You can get access to it. Okay. So, so we would need if that. You, if you could get your copies of that yeah. you know, for us to look at. Because she always prepared what we had current and then the next proposal. So do you have the proposed amounts for fiscal year um, 23? Well, pretty much, but. Okay. Um, so we'll go we'll go over that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. But the big one like you and you guys should think about it between now and Wednesday is if you're gonna put that grader out in them class four rows. Yeah. Right. Yep. We'll discuss that at the meeting. Yeah. Yep. Well you ought to think about it. Why don't we do that? Uh, we do there were some people come in here okay, and talk about one down that. and the board said that they would consider it. Yep. Consider it. Right. There's so. a bunch of people with camps that have said we used to grade them and we're not anymore. And like, yep. we've got to look at how much of that wants to be done and how much we can actually afford to do because it can get out of hand. Well, yes, yeah, because we just helped resurface one of them. Yeah. Category. Category. <laughs> what we it basically need. It's that catch 22. A lot of taxes are paid out there, so they complain. But on the other hand, how much is there? No, I got it. That's what. So we've got to determine how much. Yeah, agree. Well, potentially. We'll, what we would need to do is, is what we would need to do is work out um, a plan so that everybody, you know, if we're going to do this for one road. We should probably consider doing it for others, um, and obviously we can't do them all in the same year. So we would have a budgeted amount, and w it would be good to work out a plan: one year this road, one year that road. Because um, we don't spend a lot on it right now, so we might get increase it a little bit and do a little more than we've been doing. But I don't well, know that we can do. Particularly if we're looking at hauling sand, we're going to have to balance. Right. What 
the cost. That's a I've tremendous amount. What's that? That's a tremendous amount. Do it quite a lot better without putting your aircraft. Yeah, I think so too. I, I kind of like what we've been doing is just if someone complains, we run a load of dirt out there and smooth it out. Well, the thing of it is, is what's been happening is they take it out to 10 wheeler. They dump it in the pot. And they then the people have to spread it. Right. right. And that's what the bitch is about. Yeah. What we need to do is either get that low pro situated so it can go out there and spread six yards of gravel or hire somebody like my little truck or somebody else's little truck to, to go out go and bring spread it. it and put it in place. Because so it has made them happy usually to just spread yeah, the water to gravel. And you get it spread, they'll pack it in and it's... Okay. So it sounds like we need to start a um, start list. Chuck, I thought it was fun for any or money anyway. That's a little fun for the class four roads. If someone buys out there and they want to fix the road up to make it to a class four, a class three road, that's something you have to do. Right. They would have to do that. Have to do that. But we're responsible yeah, for bridges, 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 culverts, and ditches. That's correct. However, it was it was a town policy to to at least grade those class four roads, um, especially to the different um, camp owners. You know, they pay a significant amount of taxes to the town, and and the argument that I always hear from them is that you know what are we getting for our money? So um, and back when Rick was the road foreman, um, he made it a point to grade pretty much all of those roads. Um, during the course of the summer. We, we won't be able to do that, but we, we do budget a certain amount every year for class four roads. And if we could work out a, a plan, you know, maybe this road this year, that road next year, that we could present to people when they ask about that and stay within what we, the budgeted amount that we budget, um, that seems like a, a kind of a compromise. Um, but you want to stop and think too about the young Randy out there on uh, Hattie Bell Road. From Cabot Road, out mm -hmm. there just over a mile and a half. Right. So if you start fixing up one class four road, mm -hmm. he decides to get on a bandwagon. I understand. Yeah, no, we got to be ready. Yeah. So my feeling is I tend to take the road commissioner's recommendation on this one. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, it is I mean, I don't mind putting a lot of gravel in for Right, because it can be Pandora's body. And that's, that's been yeah. working. Usually we spread a little gravel and... Yeah. 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 Okay, so, um, good. So we'll have a, we'll warn the meeting um, and um, work on the budget and, and uh, this is our third full-time road crew hire. Um, so I just uh, wanted to also announce that we did, um, when I got home tonight from work, there was uh, the letter of agreement um, was signed by VTrans for the grant that we um, received for the uh, box culvert, bottom of the Valley Lake Road here. Okay, for the so, design. For the design. design. Yeah, design only. When I first saw the price, I wonder if that's for both, and I, I got a clarification on that. Um, Expensive. Wishful thinking. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? So, um, buy one, get one free, right? Yeah. Not. So there were there were a couple of um, uh, designers that were recommended by VTrans um, that we should contact, and I guess with our uh, procurement policy, with this, I don't know how much it's going to cost for a design. Um, but we should probably also just put it out to bid, put it, put together an RFP um, for that. Um, and I have a, the basic uh, listing that we got from uh, when um, Logan Perrin and Shauna Clifford met with us um, to look at that site, what, what would be needed um, in the design process. So we'll try to get that RFP together uh, for our next um, select board meeting, um, get that out. Uh, that's all I had to add to um, to the Town Highway report. Um, any any questions? Any? For, okay. So. Um, Thank you, Chuck. While you're still here, Chuck, the, another issue that we have on the agenda is the uh, approval for use of town road sections by the Mount Tamers <coughs> Snowmobile Club. Um, this is kind of a yearly process that we go through. Um, and they're basically accessing different parts of town uh, class three roads, basically, um, to get to different trails. Um, 
It's never been a, an issue in the past. They do have a new section of road that they're um, seeking permission for, and that's for um, a section of the county road starting at the Callis Town line um, that would run north um, to the Logtown Road. Um, are you okay with? Okay. All right. Everything else, you know, it's been. I mean, I have a copy of the 2015 agreement. Um, and everything else is the same, so it's been the same every year, pretty so much. I'll, I'll make a motion we approve the uh, request for road access as written in the letter from the Mountain Tamers okay. Club. I'll well, second that. Second. Um, any discussion? I have one question for Chuck as part of this. It's my memory that um, Steve Gray met with you, and, and I know Chris wanted to be there too, to talk about the road crew's concern on the, <coughs> the Cabot Road, where I guess now they kind of ride on the the, yeah. yeah. Was there any kind of resolve to that at all? No, not okay. yet. Okay. Uh, Steve's still working on it. We're trying to get him to, from where they come out up by Tom Brooks, mm -hmm. to work on getting a trail through <coughs> by Tom Brooks or something to go up to catch a trail up okay. before it's not in the road. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But okay. he hasn't called me for okay. a while, so I. Okay. okay. All right. Colbert Packer was putting a ding to that one. He mm -hmm. wouldn't let him go across his land. So, uh -huh. as you right. can imagine. Huh. Right. Well, I don't think he owns huh. any of that. Not much. Oh, okay. He's got 17 acres left up there. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we have a motion. It's been seconded. Um, any further questions or discussion? All, right. All those in favor of approving the. Um, Mountain Tamers Snowmobile Club use of uh, various sections of Town Road as stated in the, uh, the um, agreement that they sent to us. Um, say aye. 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 Okay, so, okay. So, my quick question, seeing that was okay, I'm guessing it would be okay if any ATV club or several residents wanted to use some. Class three roads in the summertime to get from one point to, to another point would be okay. The the understanding from um, that special town meeting that we had a number of years ago was that any town resident can use class three roads at their discretion. Um, if there was a Washington County Sheriff that wanted to make an issue of it, then that might become a problem. But town residents have use of any class three, class four road that they wish to use. So what about if the club wanted to, to do um, the same thing? That would have to be something that would be um, voted on by either the select board or... Um, I just say bring it to the body. I yeah. Say, yeah. Oh, right. this. yeah if, well, it, this is... Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but this has been apparently... And I asked the same question because I'm new at this. So yeah. forgive me. But when I asked the same question, this has been a group that has come to us for... Well, years. A lot of oh, years. Oh, you mean the snowmobile club? Yep. Yeah. A lot of years. Yeah. So it was a club that approached this body and asked for permission on these specific roads and access these. And so once that was done, there was a mechanism to move it forward. Okay. That was a so my, my opinion is that we would treat any club the same way, just bring it before just, the board. Yeah, just bring it forward. And, in order for, um, obviously there were pretty strong town objection to clubs coming and using class three roads and the, the select board, the town would actually have to create an ordinance permitting that. That's, well, that's the problem that happened before. And you were on the select board, if I believe, well, at that, that point. That doesn't mean one way or the other, you can't have both ways. If well, that's my, my concern is. The problem is only if you use a class three road in the winter time, why can't an ATV use a class three road in the summer? Uh, well, ATVs do create a little bit more damage. The road is, is um, and the, the snowmobile club is basically using small sections of road to get from one snowmobile trail to That's the other. That's all they would want to do, yeah. just to get from point A to point B. So, uh -huh. so it sounds like a reasonable request that could be entertained, right? I would think so. Sure. I thought in that meeting with that one, they said that there, they couldn't, that it was actually illegal to say certain townspeople can use the road, but people from out of town couldn't use that road. It, we, we all wanted to say our neighbors could use the roads if they liked, but that was not actually legal. 
It's 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 um, it's not memory that I got. It's not legal for the town to say that, but it was kind of an understood policy that we'll just look the other way. We're not going to create an issue over it. We can't get the issue was anyway. uh, you know having the roads with the with that ordinance that was passed, having the roads open to any anybody you know a club from Connecticut coming up with a bunch of trailers and and. Um, you know, um, turning the town roads into a theme park. Um, you know, there was definitely a very strong objection to that. Do you know how many snow builders come from out of state and use these roads? Uh, I wish yeah, we, I wish we did. People, people do I, come I, from I wish we did know. Yeah. Well, Wouldn't it be great to know? I mean, it's a point. But the VAST does have a, a statewide extension, you know, of trails that are that are used, and that's not true of. Uh, VASA at this point. There are some trails um, that they use, but um, it's, uh, it's just a different, it's a different issue. You know, snowmobile clubs have much easier process of using private land um, just because there isn't the um, damage issue with uh, snow on the ground and, and the ground being frozen that there is uh, in the summertime with, with ATVs. Um, and I would prefer that ATVs use the town roads as opposed to to just kind of ATVs push what they want to use the road. They want to get from a class four to a class four, or from a class four to a trail. They yep. don't use the roads, but, but they got to get there. And they're just you know they're just making all by existence. Uh -huh. Well, but what I see around my house are you know dirt bikes and ATVs getting using the town roads to get from one class four road to the to the other and, and no one objects to that okay what I'm saying it's not legal it's not legal it's you're not right legal. so okay. we get so we can bring it up yeah. sounds like a great thing yeah. okay can we move on is that are we done with that all right, so let's see here. Um, so the next thing that we need to discuss is our future select board meetings. Um, uh, we're kind of lucky that it's staying warm, but I think we had planned on moving um, to the community room um, at the library for our future meetings, um, through, at least through the winter until it gets warm enough to return to the town hall. And uh, Chris, were you able to check in with the principal um, about getting permission to we, do that? We have permission. Okay, all right. So, um, so we'll plan on our next, uh, actually the special meeting that we'll have next week. I don't um, know about that, but I will check. Okay. I think um, what we should do probably is let the school know um, you know, through the principal that the select board would be meeting on the second and fourth uh, Monday of each month and um, if there were any special meetings that we would contact them and get get permission to to use that room. Um, so I, I've been meaning to contact um, uh, Leif uh, Goldberg um, who's the director at the moment of the Hardwick Community Television. Um, Jim who's filming tonight is a, a board member um, about being able to provide us with um, re remote access um, as they did here in the town hall um, last summer fall um, where basically the, um, the meetings would be um, uh, streamed live so that people could access the meeting um, remotely. Um, and then I thought what we could try doing is, is using the town's uh, Zoom account to, um, and I'm not quite sure how this will work, but I'm trying to figure it out and, um, and maybe I will the talk to our two you skips. You need a screen that's big enough to see everybody well, the camera shining on us. It's tough to do. It would, yeah. I just did one in Barry last week. It was I, tough. Yeah, I think it would probably be a, a poor second where there's basically a laptop set up and um, we can kind of see who's uh, accessing the, um, the, the meeting through the lap, laptop and um, I'm not opposed to it. I'm just not technical, so I can't no. Well, <laughs> I don't think I'm not either. It'll that just be that much, but every now and then I'm forced to learn some of that stuff. Um, I was at a, a, a meeting um, earlier this fall where um, 
there was a person uh, from away that was uh, a part of the meeting um, and they were able to be at the meeting through a laptop which was connected to an app and somehow they could hear any questions that the people at the meeting, the in-person meeting, asked and they were able to answer those questions and uh, somehow they could hear that and I, I'm going to try to find out how that was done and then the amp allowed people in the uh, audience to hear their response. So. Yes, we had for mutual aid meeting, we had at Barry's uh, emergency services building, they have a setup for it. It's got a, mm -hmm. a center mic and the whole. Yeah. And if you don't have that, it's really hard to do. Right, okay. Is the gymnasium out of question? Uh, I didn't ask about that, but Monty, I'm with. No. I think that it's 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 hard to get access to that space because the school, the new district leases that space. The, yeah, but I'll ask. Good yeah. question. Thank you. I think they're probably you know with the COVID. I'm perfectly happy to keep meeting in here. COVID numbers as they are, um, there's probably a whole kind of cleaning uh, routine that needs to happen after. It's it's just because kids are going to go back in there. No, but fair question, I'll ask. And um, at some point, you know, I, I think we should again continue to be aware of what's happening with the pandemic, um, and you know, revisit from time to time, especially if we do get some type of uh, state guidelines on precautions. Um, you know, at this point, um, you know, people who feel they um, want to wear a mask are and people who feel that they don't want to or don't need to are not and uh, it's not an issue um, at this point. I, I do worry in the community room uh, as you mentioned it will be a smaller space. Um, I know my level of concern will increase a little bit um, and if things continue to get worse uh, we probably should um, kind of revisit what we might want to put in place for precautions. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, so, any any thoughts from other select board members on, or from people that are here? I'm okay with meeting up there. I'm, okay. I need to. I just can't help you with the technology part. Right. Okay. I'll do my best. Okay. If it comes uh, to right. that, we have to stay in a bigger room because I can't help. You. When Chris is there is asking about using the gym for the meeting, should he? Just put a feeler out there if we're going to be able to use it for town meeting if we have them. We should probably should. I'm just going to ask the principal directly and see about. You better ask about town meeting too because. Yeah, we should start. I'll start that process. Start a dialogue about Next town meeting. We yeah, might be well, meeting outdoors yeah. in the parking lot for, at this point. Where are you well, going? We, 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 be a damn short meeting if it's cold out. We have done that in the past. Yes, miss? I mean, that's where we had town meeting years ago. So I'll, I'll start that out again. Thank you, Mr. Keeper. Anything else about the select board meetings? And this, you know, kind of goes <coughs> across the board for other town you know, committee, commission meetings. Um, that'll probably be our go-to space um, through, through the, the heart of the winter here anyway. Um, yes. It just gets wicked it's, cold. It's the fire department's been meeting in here for 10 years, and everybody thinks that's a good idea, so we could. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's, wear your boots. We're experts a sweater. at it. Put a sweater on. Wear, wear your boots. <laughs> yeah, probably would. <laughs> we'll have a little rain shower. <laughs> Keep your comments brief. <laughs> I'm good with whatever you guys decide. Well, we'll figure well, it out. It's, it's for us to decide. <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll figure I'm out. okay with staying here. I uh -huh. Well, unless we warn it differently, just just so that we have this on the record, for next Wednesday, which is coming up pretty quick, we're going to have this in the community room. Right. That's Wednesday the first at 6 p.m. Yeah. I don't. I don't see 60 people showing up for the. So that's the plan. Be really long. That's meeting. the plan for now. Everybody clear on that? And I'm okay with that. Yeah. All right. And then if and, and if we 
make some changes. We'll make sure we warn those. But everybody's clear yeah. on that one. And technically, the everybody's clear on that one. The inter the interview should be um, an executive session. Yeah, they will. You'd have to warn the executive session yeah. in that meeting too. Yeah. Yeah. The the highway budget not not. So. So we'll have to figure that out. Yeah, so we could either start out an executive session and then come out and, and do the budget. And I need some guidance on that. Which would you prefer to do first? I don't probably we should do the, probably do the budget Probably doing the budget first so people don't have to hang around. Right. Yep. Okay. And we so go in executive session with the interviews. All right. So okay. budget at six. Budget at six. And executive we'll session do as soon as the budget is done. session okay. after that. Right. There we go. So how much time do we want to give to the budget? As much time as it takes? Yeah, it just takes whatever, whatever it takes. takes. Hopefully an hour or less, but... Okay. Hey, it's not what they want. Chuck says he's got it all polished up. It so. ain't. It ain't. All right. A lot of big changes. It's not what they want. So, um, are, we, are we set with that then? We'll move on? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> So, um, on the updates and follow-ups and other business, um, oh, I noticed I missed an S on that, but that's okay. So, um, I wanted to just uh, address the town plan, but we have our chair here, so um, could you just give us an update on the town plan, Skip? So, we have a meeting on the 15th, and then 6 o'clock, some folks on Woo! Woo! This is hardcore! So, uh, the reason why we made it was so long is that we had many comments to get for the actual new sewer. So, we got through the meeting, the comments were cataloged, and we put it on the Hungarian town letter, which comment, and how we responded to that, whether or not it was included in the plan or so the final draft of the town plan is being edited right now by the region plan commission. They hope to get it to us by Wednesday. So it's a pretty aggressive time schedule, but um, even if it's the following week, it's going to be okay. I just wanted it to be run. As soon as I get that, I'll distribute it to the other planning commission and give them a week to look it over. And then we'll go to a special meeting. Uh, I'm looking at my calendar. Probably the week of the 6th of December, somewhere in that time, to adopt a resolution to present the plan to the select board. Once the select board gets it, and I'm hoping at your December 13th meeting, I could have some time to explain the town plan. And the select board requirements are a statute to move the plan along to, to this approved. And I can help you with that. I have a, just for you guys a five page checklist that you have to go through. Only five pages? That's all. <laughs> That's great. Double space. <laughs> At the end, do we approve this town plan or do the voters vote on it? Well, you have the option. Okay. There are options in the Select board absolutely can approve it. And then send it along to the regional planning commission. And then send it along to the town and housing and community department. Ask them to do that. It's a session. We have the option of holding a special uh, Australian ballot meeting. So it would have to be Australian ballot? Yes. But you'll send us the stuff and like, I'll read it. I've got, the, I was reading Mountain stuff recently, so I'll get to town plan stuff next. Yeah. Town plan's only 114 days, so. <sighs> Don't forget it. Can't wait. Ooh. Well, yeah, it's, it's the culmination of a two-year project. So, we go to the office, 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 we go Thanks, Skip. Thank you, Skip. So and I just have a question about the letter that you want me to uh, put on the website. When can I expect it? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> You'll be up all night right now. Are you guys going to post it on? Uh, May have a couple comments on it. Uh, I'm going to pass it around to this group, and then within, I mean, you're going to see it within 24 or 36 hours. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's our only option to get this thing off. 
basically. <coughs> so we might want to consider that that's the Thanksgiving holiday, and I don't know how much. Um, I have two very full work days ahead of me, um, Tuesday and Wednesday, and then it is Thanksgiving. I have to go to Berlin. Uh, may now. Maybe early next week we could. Um, I mean, you you get do it whenever you whenever you can, and if you can get it done, um, I, I would have time to 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 give a read of it. Um, but um, uh, so skip. Sounds like you're gonna have to wait a week. Get about to be a while, about a week. Okay. Yep. Maybe early early next week. So it's not a rush. It's a week. Okay, that's fine. Sound right? I think we have until December seventh. We have until the seventh, but that's yeah. gonna require some iterations before it's yeah. really out to You might encounter diversity of opinion. Which is important. Thank you. Thank you. So um, I also put the ARPA committee um, on the uh, updates, um, and I was hoping that Brandy could kind of fill us in on that. I know they met last week. Maybe it was a week before. Two weeks, it was two two weeks, weeks ago. ago. November 11th, I think, is when they met Veterans Day. Um, so, you know, it's... We could put uh, that on the agenda again next yeah, time. And see if yeah, I, I was, I was counting on Brandy to kind of fill us in on that. Um, on what happened. Um, it was, to me, I, I think I, I saw the agenda that was posted out here and it looked like it was just kind of a first get together, kind of choose a, a chair and a secretary, you know, kind of just get things organized and um, and uh, and then you know, start to work at some point down the road. Um, but, so, so we'll... This is great to have other folks doing that. Um, I would, I would, um, uh, I think reaching out to Brandy sounds really great. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I assume that they did. Actually, Justin is on the ARPA committee. So, so can you fill yeah. us in? Uh, full I forgot about that. You answered your own question. So it sounds like we could have other members. We, we, well, no, that's not what I was referring oh. to. Uh, as far as what happened. Oh. <laughs> you answered your own question. So you mostly just organized. Right. That's okay. Everybody. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so no okay. additional members, Justin. Hmm? No additional members. No additional. That members? would be up to the chairman. I'd have to talk to the chairman. Yeah, and the yeah. chairman is. Uh, I don't know. Okay. So talk to Brandy. Okay. okay. Great. All right. Um, so that's pretty much it on the agenda. Any any questions for the select board? New generator contract. All oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, said so, I actually took notes and looked at them. All right. Not like a shopping list. So we we received today um, the uh, contract for. Um, so they're all set. We'll we're all set. Chuck, see you next Have a good night. I'll see you in the next one. I'm gonna be wishing really hard Thanks, not to snow before you get to Florida. <laughs> so this this is basically. Um, <coughs> So we have the choice in this contract of a, um, the program one is a complete annual service, so it will be a one-time uh, maintenance um, service on the generator. Um, and then we also have a choice of two visits a year. Um, so the, the complete annual service would be $959 a year or $911 if prepaid by December 3rd, 2021. Um, and then the two visits a year um, would be um, complete annual service, operational checkout service analysis, um, whatever that means. And um, I guess they have details in the cover letter for, for that. So that would be $1,554 or $1,476 if prepaid by December. I think we did one, 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 one year last year because we're checking it, where the fire department checkers are checking it every month. Every month. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so the question is whether it's yearly or quarterly. Do you remember what we did? I think what we did is that we, it was a, a, the uh, cheaper program, the one um, year. and then we got into trouble with the generator, oh, so right. we decided. We to, thought that clearly made more sense, even though you guys were checking it off. To do it two times. Two, two times. Two times. Okay, yeah. that's fine, because we're this doing a monthly oil and antifreeze check. Yeah, okay. Because I mean, that was and the. This, this builds on that. 
Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. So let's do the two years. I think, twice I a think, year. I think paying a twice little bit, a year. little bit more would so be so we know it works because right. we're not doing a functional test. Yep. Right. You guys are basically just checking, just checking the oil. Fluids. Yeah. Checking yeah. fluids. And then I remember when we met with Brookfield Service after the uh, failure of the generator. Um, they were going to do an assessment of the, um, you know, we were talking or at least had begun discussing um, whether the generator actually needed to be upgraded to be larger. They were going to do some kind of draw yeah, test. I think we were okay because and, of the, yeah. the amp is still okay and the hours were really low on it. Right. So yeah. I think that's how we left it, right? Do you remember that conversation? It was, I think we left it, we were it okay. It was still, it was still. You can bring it to my fault. Yeah, that's what I said. If it's junk, you better throw it in my car. That's how bad it is. So I think we're okay. okay. Yeah. They, yeah, they, and until we, they said that it was old, um, but if it was, but functioning. But, but functioning and if it was uh, watched over as the fire yeah. department is doing, yeah. that it should be fine. The question was whether, you know, we wanted to do kind of a draw test to see um, if in the future we might want to upgrade the uh, generator so that it could service both the fire station, the town hall, right. and, we have not and the school. We were planning to, so so yeah. it's easy. I, I would think it's a, a smart decision to have them come and do an amp test on it okay. to see what's on it now. Because yeah. I know in the long-term plans, this building is where they're going to bring the school kids in an emergency. Exactly. This right. building is not connected to the generator right, right now. Right. All we've got to do is run a wire between these two buildings and put a transfer switch and it could be connected. So let's do a draw. And there's very, very low current draw here. There's no water heat. There's no major let's, current draw Let's here. see what the problem is on it. Okay. Well, so I, think if we, I think I would have them do that and just see where we're at. It's a, I think okay. it's a 15 or 20, 25 kW. No. Yeah. Somewhere yeah. in that neighborhood. Yeah. So, um, what I'm hearing is that we will um, go with the two visits a year uh, for 1500 actually for 1476. And I'll make that as a motion. Okay. I'll second. All right. Um, any more discussion on that at all? Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 And um, yeah, so we'll, um, we'll let Brandy know. Um, and if we can pay it by December 3rd, we'll, we'll save, save a, few uh, bucks. a few bucks. Yeah. Okay, so I will, Robin, I'll return this to you um, when we're done. You had Winooski Basin water. Yeah, so this is Not that a, I want to stay, but we might as well take care right. of whatever it is. Take it. So this is a, a um, so basically I'll just read the, the letterhead. Uh, the Center for Mall Regional Planning Commission is designated the clean water service provider um, for the Winooski a river basin um, and they're conducting outreach efforts to municipalities. They're looking for two candidates who wish to represent the municipalities on the Basin Water Quality Council. And there are 49 municipalities in the Winooski Basin and they're basically looking for two candidates to represent the municipalities um, with, on this council. Um, so and they're encouraging us to share the application form widely with our municipality to those who are interested. Um, so, and then um, the purpose of the uh, council is to establish policy and prior prioritize and select clean water projects for funding to achieve pollution reduction. Um, so they're looking for members, uh, these two representatives who have a knowledge of clean water topics are an interesting in prioritizing and selecting clean water projects for funding, um, an interest in participating in the basin plan planning process and the ability to attend the quarterly meetings. Um, so I don't have any idea of anybody no. in town um, that that would um, be qualified or or interested. I don't know, if, Chris, with your geology work, if you know of anyone at all that um, either in town or it doesn't have to be necessarily our town, um, our town resident. It, you know, if you know of someone in another town um, who might be you know familiar with um, or active in any kind of um, town. Um, uh, official capacity um, who has a knowledge of clean water topics. Um, if you could think I of it. I know people who actually work on the, on, on the, doing the work on the water. Okay. So I will do my best. So okay. give this one to me for a minute. All right. So this will basically be um, recommending a person. I, yeah. Okay. So where and everybody else. Okay. 
Yeah, so all these exciting, Mr. exciting. We're people. so exciting, people just keep do, leaving. Do you mind if I, if I reach out to some people, <coughs> and then I no. send them to you? Yeah. Is that fair enough? Yeah. Okay. Or you could send it directly to the regional planning commission. That's kind of what. There's a little form here that they have provided. What would you rather? Would you rather know about these people or not know about them? I personally, <laughs> I think it's a more that you to know about. Okay. Fair enough. All right. So I might take it out of your hands a bit. Okay. All right. Gladly given, right? Holy <laughs> moly. I can't believe I just said yes to that. You're going to learn. Form my mind and quit. <laughs> so that's everything on our list. Um, let's see. No. And do I hear a motion? Motion to, to adjourn. adjourn. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion? All right, hearing none, um, all those in favor of adjourning say aye. 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 We need a pub in this town now. Yeah. Have a good one, everybody.